Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Red EDC and welcome to this edition of Channel Chat. And as you can see, this one's a little bit different than normal. We've done a couple of conglomerations one, but today we're going to kind of be talking about 2021 and what we might be seeing coming up. Joining me today, we have the ever omnipotent of Benchmade. We have Zach Stuff with us. Thank you very much for joining us today, Zach. You are welcome. Thanks for having me on the channel. We even have an actual knife company rep with us, which is very, hey. very cool. We have Russell from Artisan. How you doing, buddy? What's up? What's up? Doing good. Good, good, good. Then we have our lonely East Coaster, but one of the most awesome East Coasters we know. We have KC from Knives Fast joining us. Thank you very much, brother. Anytime, JB. Thanks for having me. And we have my fellow bearded white guy. That's a poke at Russell. Um, <laughs> it won't grow, Peter. man. It just won't grow. <laughs> we have Peter from A Therapeutic Edge. How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Thank you so much for having me on today. And also, practically my neighbor, we have Brad from Mild Mannered EDC right down the road. So how you doing, brother? Hey, JB. How are you? Great. I'm, Thanks for having me on. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, of course. Of course. So guys, uh, now we got a reflection, and I don't want that. You don't need to see me. <laughs> um, we want we to are see here you. Talking, nobody wants to see me. We are here to talk about 2021. Uh, we closed the door on 2020. Hopefully, not, not in the knife world. There were some awesome knives that came out in 2020 for sure. Um, but it's 2021. Everybody's making their announcements. And that's what we're here to talk about today. So let's have some fun. How's that sound? Cool. Sounds, Sounds good, good to me. me. All right. Awesome. All right. So let's see. Who have we heard from so far? CRKT's made their announcement. Uh, Kershaw. Uh, Benchmade, of course. There's a few SOGs out there, Cold yep. Steels. Um, Russell's here to share some exciting stuff coming from artists and CJRB. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Is there, am, who am I missing? Am I missing anybody? No, oh, that sounds like a good list. I mean, yeah. you know, some of the more well known knife companies haven't really said anything yet, but yeah. some of them are not really good at launching at the beginning of the year. So we'll see. I think we're seeing that, uh, you know, that prep for shot show that should be this week and everybody yeah. that was ramping up throughout the year is, you know, basically not, we're not doing shot show. So yeah. everybody's mm -hmm. like, well, mm -hmm. what would we normally announce for shot show? Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's pretty much the, what's, what's happening and stuff. And, you know, I mean, we are, by the time this airs, we're going to kind of be a week behind. So if, you know, somebody could very well um, announce in the week that we're kind of before this actually posts. So, I mean, you know, it, it could happen. That's okay. We'll just, uh, we just won't talk about that one, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> round two. We'll just have to do a round two. There, there you go. go. There you go. So, well, I tell you what, since, since we have Russell with us, Russell, would you like to would you like to kick us off and kind of show us? Oh yeah, oh, what yeah. artisan CGRB has coming up? Oh, this is gonna be fun. Okay, so uh, let's just start with, by saying we did a lot of stuff in Q4 of 2020. Like we had a lot of excellent releases. We are very happy with what came out. We're very happy that you guys all a lot of you guys got to check them out. I see one on Zach's table right now, the Mylia. Super happy with that one. Uh, but we decided to kind of just like, get out a few very um, well. First quarter 2021 is going to be a lot of things we've been working on to kind of get up to snuff on. We're trying to get some stuff out. We finished up a particular model we were sitting on from last year. We got a new, uh, I'll just say we kind of have a slight new direction for Arzen. You're going to be seeing more, slightly more competitively priced knives coming out of the Artisan brand, as well as the already competitively priced CGRBs. So like, uh, let's say, say the, I'll, I'll pull in from last year. So the Arroyo. This guy, Micarta, RPM9, really great shape. Uh, kind of a more fit and finish oriented knife over the CGRB line with a slightly higher price point, but we like the quality that came out with something like this. So we're aiming more knives that direction as well as producing some of the more high-end titanium premium material ones. And for this year, we're starting to kind of work with a few more fixed blades. 
So uh, last year, again, the uh, we released a sea snake to a incredibly you know, great response. So we're like, okay, all right, time to get on that fixed blade train. So let's see. Uh, I don't know, Big Red, would you like me to start with fixed blades, artisan knives, or CGRB? Let's give you the choice on this one. Um, well... You know I'm a CJRB guy, so let's see. Let's see what CJRB has has. All right. For. So right now we have one current CJRB release, and it is a doozy. And I know a lot of you guys have already seen this on our Instagram, but I think it's important to see it in scale. We have the Tigris, like the river. <laughs> oh, now just okay. let me hold this up to my face. This thing is not <laughs> small. I had someone asking, "Is like, oh, is that the same size as the Mylia?" No, no, it's not. <laughs> no, no. This is not. We also, so we, I can get this close if I can get some detail. We did two types of G10 here. So we have the overlay G10. I have the white and red and black one. We have a blue and black with a black and blade and a green and black. We have custom color hardware. So we have this kind of extended lanyard hole, which is kind of cool because we actually milled out a section here. Let's see if I can get it close enough. Yeah. yeah so your yeah, lanyard yeah. hangs a certain direction. There's actually custom hardware. We have an indented pivot. And the fit and finish on this is just insane, but mostly just that blade. Let's get a proper logo side. Let's see if I can get it with that shine, but look at that. That's but mostly awesome. this is actually, let's see, a fairly thin slicey blade for something that is just about full flat ground. This is an insane cutter and it's just, I mean, I don't have big hands. If you guys, anyone here knows me, I do not have giant hands, but uh, if I did, <laughs> This is still going to fit nicely. Dang. Oh, also a uh, custom clip. So we have a whole different set of clips on this. This is still a deep carry. The lanyard actually comes up just a bit out of the pocket. For those people who actually like to have a lanyard and want to have it drape over the side of the pocket instead of having it kind of popping out, this actually works really well. I carry this one with a lanyard for a little bit, and I actually really prefer this style, surprisingly, because normally I don't like things sticking out. But if I were to use a lanyard on this, it makes a lot of sense. Of course, the action is fantastic. Would have guessed CGRB. We're kind of good at that. Mm. And in hand, <laughs> this is just a. Do I have to say a lot more about this? I mean, it, it's a monster of a knife. It's kind of going. It's kind of taking the uh, the crowd that loved the Rhea. Like, great knife. Yeah. Wonderful knife. Yeah. Great design. Yeah. For everyone that hated this knife, we have the knife for you. <laughs> and it I, is. I've been whispering in Russell's ear for months. Make, yeah, make me a knife. Yeah. Make well, me a knife. And, and, and guess and what? He did. Guess what? Thank, uh, thank some of our in-house designers. This is all in-house. This is all in-house design. I was going to say, I was going to say, Peter, that looks like a knife for you. <laughs> that looks like a knife you would be drooling over to be perfect. Oh, man. Oh, ever since I saw a picture of it, I've been like, there's money I've spent. Yep. It's just gone. And it's going to be very <laughs> affordably priced because it's CGRB. I'm, I'm yeah. guessing, oh, also, it is uh, important to mention, this is an RPM9 blade. This is not T2. Ask, We're yeah, running this in RPM9. So right, you got uh, that. I was gonna ask more. about that. Yeah. Yeah. So we're uh, we're trying to move cool. that forward to a lot of our our regular knives. I believe we're going to be running mostly RPM nine this year. We may have some variants in that, but for our CGRB line, we're trying to move things towards RPM nine. And to yeah, be fair, great. we've had some we've had a great amount of you know a lot of attention on it, a lot of eyes on it. It's still getting you know people are still getting used to it. We've got positive and negatives, but so far most people who have used it have been very happy with it, and we are very happy with the results thus far. All right, so that is CGRB, and that's the only one we have right now. There are probably going to be some more coming out, but right now that is all we have lined up for Q1. So let's move on to some of the artisan stuff. So, Russell, real quick, can I just stop yes. you real quick? So, of I mean, I, I think what's cool about what you're doing with that new steel is is applying it in the budget realm, right? And, mm -hmm. and not as a budget, but that that lower side of the the price spectrum because i think we see all the time all these fancier new steels come out and they oftentimes are way out of range for anybody to be able to for a lot of people to be able to buy them and experience them so i think it's really cool that arson said hey let's figure out and try to find a new steel that we can actually put across the board but that still delivers a lot of performance so i think yeah. that's pretty neat i agree and thank you for that because that is really something we had in mind for this is that there are a ton of high-end steels out there i mean even the ones that you don't normally see on knives uh, that are less common, say, like, I think there's still some people using Talonite. There's still some uh, LC200 Den, like, so popular right, right now. It's such a hot steel, but it, it's it's out of the average person's price range just for the material, let alone the construction right. of the knife. So right. 
and what everyone has always been saying for all of us, you know, Chinese companies, Chinese based companies using D2, because, you know, even for American companies, Kershaw's using D2, uh, CRKT, I believe he's using some D2 on some of their special edition knives. D2 is good. It's a great steel. It yeah. just doesn't meet what the average kind of EDC nut wants in their budget knife. They want something that's stainless, is tough, is resilient, and I like to hope easy to sharpen. And we just tailor the steel to meet those needs exactly. without, yeah. you know, without running a super high cost. And I think we nailed it. And that's, it's like, it's some fresh. companies are just now getting into D2 while well, you guys are advancing the market, you're right. advancing the science, you're <laughs> yeah. advancing the technology. Yeah. While some companies are just now sort of settling into D2, I, I, you know, I love some of the things they're doing, but I want to congratulate them for entering, you know, 2019, <laughs> right. right? And while you guys are trying something entirely different and unique, and you mentioned that there's some ups and some downs on the web, I'd like to remind you that the web is notorious for its negativity, right? Yeah. People love to find something to complain about as opposed right. to celebrating the positives. And I've got a couple of knives in ARPM9 now, and I have zero complaints. It's, it makes me happy. I get to explain what it is. It's kind of nerdy, you know, because I'm a nerd. Yeah. So nerdy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Cool. We, we know. Well, yes. And yet, right. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah. I'm totally not that either. Not at all. Right. But the, the edge retention is really good. The, the way that it, it holds the grind, the way that it looks when it's ground, right? It doesn't Probably have a bunch of rainbowing effect. It has a really nice, the grain looks really good because I'm, again, I'm a nerd. I just mm -hmm. really enjoy that. And so, you know, the, the naysayers are going to, no matter what you put out in the world, people okay. are gonna be like, yeah, but yeah, whatever, right? You it's going to happen. It's going to happen, I mean, but I'm... What I like about the whole thing is, I mean, everybody, you know, everybody was like, well, we want knives in D2. And then a year later is like, why are there so many knives in D2? <laughs> it right? really was the case. It and really then, was. And Artisan's like, well, all right, if you don't want, if you don't want D2, well, then here's RPM9. Here you go. I mean, try this out. You know, and here's I, a I, brand I, new steel cool. to meet yeah. all of your needs. You know, I mean, you know, it's it's gonna go. Th it, it's just, I mean, I'm sure, and it, it's just funny how the knife world kind of cycles through stuff. You know, like that, it's you one know? thing we have to keep in account. Like we have to keep that in mind is that this industry is a hobbyist industry in a lot of aspects. Right. right. And it's like, you can't please the hobbyists. The hobbyists are always going to look for the best, the brightest, the newest, the coolest. And if we can, if we can have a, a little bit of a spotlight for a bit, great. But the people that are users should also get the best experience for the person that needs to use their knife every day for work. For, for certain tasks as someone who is going to be doing certain things that require a steel that works we need to build for them too this is an everyman steel it's not it's not going to be something that's super hardcore we're not it's not it's not budget m390 it's a steel that's meant to work well and i'm really proud that we were able to get that and do it well in this amount of time we were able to get this whole process out and get knives running in this steel in under a year that's pretty impressive that's that's awesome. yeah Anyway, I should probably keep going with the models before I keep talking about the steel. Because sorry, I got I talk a stop on no, Yeah, yeah, Russell. I, I talk Russell, we we do have other not other companies to talk. No, I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> sorry, kidding. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm kidding. I gotta, I give, you, I gotta give you a hard time. Was there a time, price man. point? Was there a Let's price see. point on that one? For the, the uh for the Tigris? Yeah. Uh I believe it will be under 60. I cannot give an exact wow. price point. We have not set a price on this, but it <laughs> should be congruent so with the rest of the CGRB line. <laughs> That's a whole lot of knife for less than 60 yeah. bucks. Here's, yeah. here's a ton of steel. Have it for less than 60. That sounds good to me. Pretty much, yeah. I, yeah. I hope I'm right on that one because I have not got an active quote, but I'd be very surprised if it was anything, you know, any more than that. CGRB, right. we're trying to be as competitive as possible with the CGRB brand, and I right. think it's been a very successful tactic. So let's move on to some of the new artisan ones. This one, again, is kind of in the more uh, budget-oriented material with a somewhat higher quality fit and finish and more higher quality pieces. So this is the Cazador. Whoa. Very <laughs> acute Warncliffe style knife. Wow. Yeah, we're gonna have this in a bunch of color options. We're aiming for micartas, we're aiming for, you know, some G10 ones. We might even do a carbon fiber one, maybe, we'll see. But I am currently holding uh -huh. on to a natural G10 one. This one has a titanium pivot collar, a really cool tie clip. We actually made a slightly bent paddle style clip for this one. Ooh. Interesting. And again, like with the- I like that fairly acute Warncliffe blade. We, we actually had this one a little bit thinner originally, but we decided to thicken it up a little bit because it was very thin at the tip initially. So we wanted to make it a bit more durable, especially with something that is a three and a half inch blade, not including the, uh, the finger choil here. Right. So 
Ikazador. And again, I'd just like to see you didn't spare any expense on that pivot there, uh, Russell. Yeah, it's a it's a lot of metal for a pivot. <laughs> it's big. It is. It's just like it, it's like. Oh look, it's a bird. It's a it's a really like. <laughs> that's a bird with a blown out no i'm kidding <laughs> dude, dude took way too much acid in the 70s and you know so so okay now what that is a really large pivot and that's something we don't see very often is mm -hmm. there any specific background behind it or it's just design feature in this case it's a design feature we okay. really wanted to highlight that kind of teardrop shape so okay. see, it's kind of got that raindrop okay. style and it was kind of an aesthetic thing because the design of this knife was it's, it's very clean it's a really clean shaped knife you notice the curvature of the top to the back is almost consistent. Actually, pretty much when you get to the tip, you just don't have it turned to a Warncliffe. We needed something to add an accent here. And I think this added just a bit of something, just a bit of yeah. something going on, especially with that pivot collar, because yeah. that just, that adds so much more color. I think the, the contrast of the natural and the blue is maybe not the most ideal for a blue, but we might do this one with a gold or something, which I think would look really slick. But just look at that blade. Can I H. put two votes in for the blue collar? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm digging well, the blue. <laughs> and I got a, I got a recently got a comment <laughs> on. I can't yeah, where it was, but it was. See that. It was here. enough yeah. with the blue pivot collars. That was the comment that I got, and I'm like, well, I mean, blue tie, titanium. If you do titanium hardware, blue is a very consistent color to do. It adds pop. It adds color. It's not too much. Like if we did. Well, purple, I'm sure that's why it's done too. Yeah. I'm sure that's why. It's an easy color to come, you know, it's one of the easier, I mean, I know nothing about anodizing, so I'm not even going to go there, but I mean, like you said, it seems like it, it must be a pretty easy color to bring out that pop with. Yeah, and it's a comfortable well, color because on different models with different handle scales, blue usually looks good, or if I did a purple and uh, green micarta, that would be a little wild. I'd be into that, but I'm not sure everyone else would be, but yeah, yeah, yeah. let's get a close yeah. up of that blade just so... <laughs> I like the blade. Looks I good. Yeah. No, it's... the lines are really clean. And I mean, if you guys know me and my love for Laconicos and stuff, I mean, you guys yep. know I love the the clean lines like that. And that's, oh, that's yes. definitely following that. I also really like the flipper on this one because it, it's a very low angle flipper. So it really is, you can very comfortably light switch it or push nice. button. It's really nice. Oh, it's go. got a, it's a very fidgety, as you can see, I'm, I'm just playing with this thing. Like this is just such a it's... nice feeling knife. Right it on. sounds good. Yeah, it's got it a does, it's, it's got a good sound. Yeah, acoustically, the, I can't open and close. It sounds good. It's so we're we're definitely dialing in some of our our um, our bearings wow. and our action because it's all of the stuff I've gotten so far has been just so incredibly. It's not fall shuddy. It's very hydraulic, and this one even with a thin blade, it was still mm -hmm. doing really nicely. But um, I'm really impressed with this clip. Actually, that's one thing that really got me. Is that's a totally like different clip, clip than we've done. I before. do like the clip for sure. Yeah. And then where it sits at the top there. So look at that little bit of detail work where it really rounds off yep. in the same section as everything else. So it sits really nice in the pocket. Did I see a lanyard post buried in the backspacer? Yes, you did. There's a lanyard post right there. Cool. For those people that just really um, really like but don't like lanyards, or for the people that really just don't <laughs> like lanyards and don't want to have to worry about it, yeah, it's there. It's been a very it's been a nice feature for us. I like that we're doing the lanyard post a bit more. It's nicer than the whole. For some people that want to use a big, thick lanyard. So like the Feldspar has a big old full lanyard hole and people like that because if they want to use a full lanyard, it's great. But for most people, they just want a small one. This is perfect. So that's the Cazador. So I am going to take a little, I'm going to take a little split off before I show you the, the big, my personal favorite of the releases, but I'm going to go to some fixed blades. Okay. So both of these are designed by Mr. Dylan Mallory, who has come up with some one one model that is just such an interesting utility knife and one that is absolutely wild. <laughs> can I, can oh, I interrupt you for one second? Yeah. I'm just going to say hashtag swipe right for Dylan. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Continue. I had to throw that out there. I had to throw that out there. Oh, yeah, no. So I always swipe right. Has, has yeah. anyone see, seen Dylan's merch store? By all means, oh, go yes. check out Dylan's oh, merch. Yes. 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 The sweatshirts, they're great. I love it. I, I kind of want to get with some of the swipe right stickers just to throw on, on everything, but he's, he's got cool stuff. Anyway, so uh, both these models will actually be undergoing a few changes. Just this is the base one. We, uh, we actually sent these to Dylan. He took a little time to look them over, draft up some changes, and uh, make a few small modifications. But I've actually used both of these uh, fairly extensively for various things, and I am very happy with, they, with the way they perform. So we have the first one here. 
And the name oh, just got verified today. This is the Silix, Silix. for the nice. willow tree, that kind Ooh, of willow shaped shape. blade. Ooh, this is, this is uh, one, it's, it ain't small. This is a good kind of like a yeah. five incher and it's very reminiscent of a kitchen knife. Yeah. But yeah. the profile of it is actually more utility knife oriented. So this is kind of, um, I have had a lot of ways to think about this knife because I like it, but I'm just like, what is this for? And the thing is that <laughs> it is a, it's a utility knife. It, it does a lot of things well, but it kind of moves towards the side of slicey kitcheny tasks more than bushcrafting. It's kind of just a utility knife in a different sense. In terms of construction, this is it has a nice substantial handle, contoured scales. Let's see if I can get that up close. Nice contoured oh, yeah. scales, very comfortable in hand, plenty of space. The weight on this is very nice. You see, it's got a bit more back weight. So it really has that nice kind of flowy feel in hand. As a kitchen cutter, uh, I took this and pretty much used this knife exclusively in the kitchen for about a week and um, no problems. Other than something I need to do a long cut on on a cutting board, this handled it great, especially with this slight curvature. So if I'm doing any chopping, any cutting, and I'm just kind of cutting off maybe like, you know, about one inch of the heel to get on a cutting board. But if I'm cutting on a surface, it's great. If I'm just holding something or cutting, if I'm doing outdoor tasks, it's great. And you get a nice, long, thin, Dylan-esque knife. It's got a wonderful profile. And just, it's a lot of knife. It's a lot of knife that doesn't take up a lot of space. Very cool. So, yeah, this one I like, is I definitely neat. like the looks of that one. Yes, sir. Yeah. What we're probably going to be doing, uh, we're probably going to be extending this down a little bit to kind of give it a bit more bit more blade width towards okay. the heel. And okay. we're going to be uh, going to be deepening the choil a little bit to kind of make okay. it a little bit more, honestly, a bit more like a kitchen knife even. But okay. as an outdoor knife, look at the profile. Look at the profile of this thing in the sheet. This is actually fairly small. Oh, yeah. yeah. For an outdoor knife. Yeah, nice when you were showing it the first, I was like, that's really nice, and I like the slenderness of it. Yeah, it's it's got Dylan's styling to it, but it's just such a clean, just everything knife. Yeah. It's it's hard to explain. It's hard to describe this as anything other than a straightforward utility knife, and I think yep. that is exactly what it is. So that is great the, around like. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, go ahead. Absolutely. Go. I was go just right gonna ahead. say, looks great for a camp knife. Uh, be great yes. around a, a campsite. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It, yeah, and I, and uh, this is also an RPM nine. And I did happen to do a bunch of cutting on some. Uh, we'll just say, it was meat, it was citrus, it was mushrooms, all those things that tend to cause some weird stuff in the kitchen. I I cut them and left this out overnight on the counter. Nothing, not a dang Perfect. thing. Well, some scratches from a from a scrubby pad, but that's about it. So, the silix designed <laughs> silix. by Dylan Mallory. Very cool. Now I'm gonna check my phone really quickly so I get the name of this the second one right just to make sure i'm not yep all right i was correct all right this one is a little wild this is the hystrix and uh oh i hate to say this it's it's i'm thinking this is the the covid safe knife you have your little like you know you have your little touch point right there for keypads <laughs> oh there you go there you go That's but awesome. this thing is this thing is something um <laughs> <laughs> this thing is a ventilator. This is a really slick combat knife. Can I say? Can I say one more thing, Russell? Oh yeah, go for it. Hashtag pokey stabby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this is um, actually the one thing I really love about this. Just to just to point this out, it has a lot of blade similarities to the Centros. Oh yeah, except yeah, it yeah. is. Gonna say, it's a like good bit thinner. <laughs> A bit thinner it's got that that uh that swedge on the back it's a lot more fine pointed and um i may have stuck this into several things to see what it would do and it uh it went through them really well but the ring the ring on the end <laughs> is something and this is just oh this is take that to the gas station with you peter yeah right that is uh <clears throat> yeah that is <laughs> it is it's a little gas station -y, but i gotta say no, it's, I'm not, trust fun. me. I am, no, no, no. Oh, I am not oh. calling that a gas station knife at all. That is not what I'm saying. That's funny. Peter also always references his gas station knife fights. That's definitely That's right. one that yep. you want to have with you. No, yep. that is not a gas station knife. I love. I, I, it is really. I would cool. never call Dylan's knife a gas station knife. It's a, no, no, it's but it's an ideal knife if you happen to get into a disagreement in the back of a gas station. Exactly. Yeah. That is my <laughs> point. That is yep. my point. 
<laughs> Actually, so the one thing that I've gotten on this one, more than just like, yes, all, all jokes aside and all like gas station stuff aside, this is essentially a just roided up burden trout. Yep. And to yeah. be fair, in terms of usability, it will do those tasks really well. It's a very fine tip knife with a lot of belly. You can slice, you can cut, you can trim. And if you're hanging it off your finger, you know, I can I can do the whole like drop thing. So whew, I can still work with it. <laughs> So says burden, the guy who doesn't hunt. Does, says the guy who doesn't hunt or fish. I'm assuming that's how you do it. But burden yeah. trout with attitude. Yeah, and um, also I do love the fact that. All right, so this is just a dumb thing that I like about this thing. I like that mm. the ring actually nestles into this finger a little bit. So if I'm reaching for a cut, or I'm actually, I, I use this for something really stupid. I was poking holes in things for not. <laughs> uh, we'll just say not tactical purposes. But nobody I need to reach ever something. does that, Russell. Nobody ever. No one ever does. I, all right. I was things. reaching for something on the floor that I dropped and this was sitting there I'm like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> but I do very much enjoy the tactile feel of this ring. I think this is just such a neat piece. It's got this just incredible cool factor. And the grip is for something so slim. Look, look how thin that handle is. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. This is locked. Like this is, it's in hand. It pulls in. The nice thing about having the sheath. So like this, if you do a vertical mount on this one, it's just ring and go. Grab and go. Yeah. yeah. Super yeah. neat. So yeah, this one, good old Dylan. As I'm forgetting the name once again, trying to trying to cover for that. Um, Hystrix. The Hystrix. Hystrix. Yep. Like the porcupine. Like the porcupine. It's meant to uh, emulate the quills of a porcupine. Hystrix. Really? Okay. Yes. Wow. Hey, Old four porcupines. Well, you know, we le I learned something today, right? Yeah, there we That's go. That's good. That's good. <laughs> All right. So those are the two new fixed blades we have coming from Dylan Mallory. I got one more. Uh, Brad, I think this is your, your jam. Okay. <clears throat> there you go, Brad. This is you uh, put me on the spot here. Yep. Had this one work. Had this one uh, in the works for a while. This is the oh, Arena. Finally Beautiful. done. It's been a bit. We This is the first knife we've done with double coral micarta. Look oh, at man, that. Beautiful. Could yeah. you say that the name again, Russell, please? The Arian, uh, Arian. like the horse. Arian, like the horse in Greek oh, mythology. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And yep. this is, also, if I can get this to work, this is the thing, because we have some very fine micro milling on the back. Ah, the camera just isn't picking it oh, up. Come yeah. on. Oh, I'm just not picking it up. Wrong lighting, but there, I can promise you, there is micro milling on the back here. We micro milled everything just a little bit to add a little bit of texture. And we added a little bit more jimping compared to the original prototype. So Brad, you handled the proto. I'm very happy we got that yep. one out to you. I'm glad you loved it. But we added just a bit more jimping. We kind of roughed it up a little bit. So this has a much more positive grip in hand. This is no, kind of, great. yeah. And and it's S35 now. Instead of doing the RPM9, mm -hmm. we went S35. So we are going premium materials, nice tie, nice micarta, really cool clip. Uh, in pocket, this is... Probably one of my awesome. favorite clips so far because it has that kind of slightly canted angle where yeah. it maximizes how much, I guess, or I guess it minimizes the profile in your pocket because your hand always slips past it. That There's was no one of my, I mean, it, one of the things I enjoyed the most when I was checking out that prototype. I mean, one, it's a ridiculously fidgetable knife. I it mean, is it's very fidgetable. Crazy action, but the size of the knife and the ease of carry, you wouldn't Actually, put them together. I mean, it's yeah. like, you, when you get it out and open, you're like, wow, I've got a substantial knife here. But it's a it really, really it's actually, just, I think that's a good way to illustrate this is, yeah. let's take a look at the size of this guy. That is right, the exactly. thinness of this knife. Yeah, it, is, it carries like a dream. Yeah. It really does. Even the uh, the titanium, I believe we're going to have some titanium ones coming out in the future, but we put out the Coral Micarta one first because this was the showstopper. Yeah, that's cool. And it is so light <laughs> because, <laughs> so since we contoured the Micarta, instead of it just being a slab, this is actually a fairly strong structure because it is kind of, you know, it's ribbed in the center. Mm -hmm. But since it's just a single side scale, this knife weighs less than the, uh, the I, I believe it's well under that ounce and inch rule. Mm -hmm. A blade that's almost, you know, we're, we're hitting almost like, a, it's almost four inches. But yeah. this is a big one. But as you're right, it is incredibly fidgety. In fact, I think yeah. I, I made a video doing the, the five finger challenge with this guy, which I'm trying to emulate holding the upside. <laughs> Yeah. Never do that on camera. It's yeah, it'll happen. never happen. But <laughs> also, uh, we did kind of actually we didn't have to make any changes because I know some people have had questions about this this opening hole. Now it is a very thin opening hole. A lot of people who want to like spider flick it are gonna have problems because if you open from here and you put your finger all the way up here, it's not the easiest thing in the world to open. 
but you are kind of working with leverage. So you put your thumb all the way down here. It opens really nicely. In fact, it actually kind of slides your thumb back almost like a lever and just has this really just buttery action. Yeah. Now and of I, course, have to, I have to ask Russell. Oh, yes. The, the, the thumb hole and stuff. It is milled or chamfered, correct? It's got slight chamfering. It's okay. still got a little roughness to it. It's okay. not it's not smooth. We've had we've run into that issue. We've had some some pieces that had chamfered holes that were just too smooth. So okay. you can use them. Just slide right out. Okay. We left it a little rough. It okay. does grip. It does bite. Okay. And I'll you tell you though, I mean the, with the way you can flick that you know, Spidey flick. I don't know who's slow rolling that thing. I mean, it's yeah. it's it's way too fun to just. It really is. Well, I'm just of, here all day doing some this. Some of us aren't very good at Spidey flick. <laughs> well, Brad. I'm not good at it either. But but that knife made me look. Okay, uh... but so so, Big Red, this will teach you how to do it. It is yeah. so intuitive. Um, just the, with the way it's seated. So with the way and the length of this hole, it's very <laughs> hard because your finger is right there. If you're gonna pull back, your middle finger's right there already. Just exactly boom. see that. And I've got chubby little Shrek type fingers here, and I'm telling you, it's like <laughs> it wasn't a problem getting in there. Honestly, if if we did not even mill this whole thing and just left half the section here, just to say you could only spider flick this knife, I think it would still work excellently. It is just such a nice action. God, I'm so happy with this. Yeah. Um, this oh, one, I, I actually, oh, actually, you know, I'll tell you how much I like this one. I sell the proto in my pocket. Yeah, I yeah. carry this one yeah. on a regular basis, and this there thing is go. fantastic. Now, is there going to be a full tie like the proto? I believe so. Uh, it's going to okay. be if we are going to run it. This will depend on the on the sales numbers. If it sells well, which it's already started to move pretty well, um, yeah. If it sells well, we're probably going to put out a full uh, full tie one with some micro milled scales. But right now, we really want to get this this double coral one out because it is just like it's just so good looking. Look at that. Yeah, <laughs> I do like the profile. I really do oh, like the profile of it. It's so it's so clean. It's got such a good, neat awesome. profile. And uh, Chris Ortiz, he has been an absolute pleasure to work with. He's kind of up and coming, but his his world is not traditionally nice. He's a scale maker. He does some crazy cool scales. Yeah. Uh, but this was one of his his first designs, and it really is a CNC friendly knife. The guy's a machinist, and this is a very machinist oriented piece. All the lines on here are really clean. The curves on here are kind of cuts. We have a nice little lanyard post back there as well. And then just all the angles are, I, I don't know how to describe it other than it's neutral and clean, but a little edgy. And there's just something about this that is very friendly to us people that like knives. And there's something that kind of was like a, I can't put a finger on it. But this is a shape that I've missed in terms of me being a knife collector and you know and a rep. Mm -hmm. I handle all the arts and stuff. And there's something about this that is just so friendly to hold on to with just this big hook shape right here and a clean straight line. Yeah, it feels yeah. great. It feels I, great in hand and it carries really nice in the pocket. Seems seems very neutral. That's good. It's yeah. really nice. And did you, you know, say did in... you say blade steel? I'm sorry. That one is S35. So we S35, up the okay. We up okay. steel S35 on that one. So you good. get your premium good. steel, okay. premium tie, premium materials. Excellent. Artisan Excellent. has proven that they can do crazy. Yes. Right? I mean, oh, yeah. They've got a catalog of some of my favorite crazy knives. <laughs> oh, That's my goodness. That's Artisan making just a knife. And I don't mean that it's without design. It's perfect in its design and like simplicity. I love the prototype when you brought it over and I got to hold it. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. But in a world full of people who are making knives that look like they're part transformer, Ooh, yeah. um, that is just an excellent for you know and you were talking earlier about the users in the world now I, I, this is shocking to me but it turns out there are people that own knives for more than instagram and youtube um that's bs <laughs> i know right <laughs> what's wrong with that <laughs> uh, that's a knife that carries forward a designer's art well, so just well, well thank you for joining us today peter i'm glad we could have you um no <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fine. No no, right. no, 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 But you know, I mean, so why does Spider why is Spider Co so successful? It's not that their knives are beautiful. It isn't. It's because they just work. Yeah. Yeah. And that knife manages to be both beautiful and just work. It, right. And that's awesome. It cuts. It cuts so well. The profile of this one is just here. Let me let me just let me just do this again because I am so happy with this thing. Look at how thin this is. 
Like it's not crazy yeah. thin. Yeah. But considering how wide the blade is and how thin that edge gets, this thing slices yeah, like it's no one's business. So for so is for the, the BTE guys, do you know how much how it is behind the edge? Do you have a do you know offhand? I don't, but it's thin. Okay. It's uh it is it's comfortably thin. thin. But unfortunately, well, my caliper Russell says crap. it's thin. That's it's, it's thin. thin. Yeah. So there. Huh. It's got the so Russell seal of approval. Flat grind. Yes, it does. So that would be a full a. I guess it's a almost. Well, it's not full flat, but it's partially flat, flat. and you get this nice section here because if you happen to use a KME style sharpener, one of the ones that uses a clamp, you can just clamp it right in there. Nice. So, yeah, and especially because this has got such a wide blade. I mean, let's let's try to find something comparative wise. Let's pull something uh, an older model. You know, I'm just gonna pull the Rhea out. Uh, this is let's see. Let's just hold this side to side. Yeah, that's almost the entire width of the Rhea. In terms yeah, of yeah 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 actually I can oh wow you can get a little bit more on there so it's a very wide blade and again even in my small hands but Peter you handled this one previously it's like it's not yeah. it is a biggish blade no it's a, it's a my size knife for sure and oh, yes. but but it doesn't when you oh. had it here and Christine got a chance to hold it mm -hmm. uh, it's a my size knife but it doesn't limit itself to large hands it's very, very much comfortable so. there for you go. As well. that's a that's I see a, a, I see a T yeah. one down there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and that I was just going to say, I mean, this has been for a long time, one of my favorite all time EDC knives. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason for that, and it is, I mean, in, in a lot of ways, you could say this is about as boring a knife as you can get. But there's a reason this has always sort of spoke to me and stayed in my collection. And when I got that Arian, it was the same thing. I mean, it was like, wow, this is exactly, this is a Brad knife. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's a lot bigger. I mean, it's definitely a lot bigger, but it just, it, it really, it, it checks all the boxes for me. It doesn't but feel I'm as big as it is. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so well, that cool. is the, well, we've, yeah. we've kind of covered A and C. It kind of we're kind of going in alphabetical order here. Let's <laughs> switch to B. Cool. And let's talk Benchmade. And I know Zach's here just itching to talk Benchmade, oh, man. All right, all right, Zach, Zach take Benchmade. it away. <laughs> so yeah, so Jody, you gonna or JB, you gonna walk us through the. Uh, the online stuff there well i will try uh, i will do my absolute best as possible so if you want to talk about something i will try to bring it up here and we can look at it let me kind of switch the I mean, view around so we can get a the, little the first there we one go. that's out the first one that's out that you can get hands on with is the mini bug out the all blacked out version sure you know obviously if you're liking the bug outs you like the mini bug outs this is kind of that you know matches Ooh. nicely with the full size there there we came go. Came out last year. I do have to say though, you know, everybody was pretty bummed out when they saw the discontinued list last year because all of the Adamas knives were on there. And everybody was like, What? Why are we getting rid of the Adamas knives? And I'll tell you what, I mean, I have one that I'm checking out, but this this mini Adamas is like the perfect EDC size knife. And I'll have to tell you, people just need to get that on their list. You know, they brought out the crew wear in the full size Adamas and the mini Adamas. They re redesigned it slightly through the handle, a little more traditional to Shane's, uh, you know, Shane Seibert's original design. And they even did a little bit of slimness, you know, took out a little bit of that girth uh, in the handle on the full size. It's, it's incredible. So yeah, that Adamas is the first, I mean, so I, I've got a, uh, I know this is going to come as a surprise, but I have some bench maids. <laughs> uh, not, nothing like Zach, <laughs> but that knife, um, that's on my top of the, of the buy list. Um, I've never really mm -hmm. been an Adamas fan. I've held them before, but the, the subtle changes that they've made mixed with the new blade steel, the colors, the overall way that that thing looks, it's, it's absolutely top of my list for knives for 2021. Yeah. And I was, I was really surprised with, because I, you know, I've owned the, the full size Adamas and I have one of those and you know, the comparison between the two is just like next level up. But I think what the Adamas is known for is just being that knife that if you want to go and, you know, pry a door open or, you know, whatever you want to do with it, it's going to hold up, you know, full frame, full stainless steel liners, all that. Um, but they transferred all that same design to the mini. And kind of like the Crooked River, you know, the full size Crooked River is a large, large knife. But the yeah. mini Crooked River is like a really good EDC knife. So I think this mini Adamas fits that category. 
And we've got so I'm crew, really most excited about that. And we've got crew wear on that one. It's crew yeah. wear steel, mm -hmm. and that's I really like the gray. I do like that gray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and Zach's right at 3.25 inches. I mean, that's going to be ideal, man. That's that's going to be a great size blade, and and you're right. That crew wear is going to be, you know, like you said, pry a door open. Yeah. Yeah, it'll hold up for everything. I mean, they came out, I think like like everybody's doing, you know, we're seeing this first quarter launch from Benchmade that, you know, you would have been seeing at SHOT Show, you know, and, you know, they, they've kind of done a neat thing over this last year. And when they announce a knife, you can now go to the Benchmade website and you can see how many days until it comes out. Oh, that's so cool. Go, that is cool. You go look at, yeah, you go look at the mini that's Adamas smart. right now and it comes out and, you know, 42 days or Russell, are you, you taking know. notes? Oh, yeah. Ours just like, <laughs> no, no, is, no, no, is no. the knife done? Yeah, it's on the website now. It's like, hey, yeah. oh, the knife is offline. It's on the website. Yeah. So, and that's something good for, you know, anybody, because a lot of the websites, you know, for the knife retailers, they will go through and say, hey, pre-order this. Yeah. But you don't know when it's going to come in. Exactly. So the cool part is, is you can go and look and say, you know, like the, oh, uh, what's the next one that's going to come out? I think, uh, was it the mini 945 with the aluminum handles? You okay. Know, the mini Osborne, you know, 945. They're, they're kind of th doing that throwback with traditional aluminum handles and purple barrel spacers and stuff. But that mm -hmm. one's going to come out in 30 days. So you kind of get the idea of, you know, similar to last year, you know, we saw all these new knives in SHOT Show. And then they trickled out over the next, you know, two months. Well, I tell you what, I mean... I am, I am super stoked about the, what is it? The 535 BK-4, is it? Huh. The one with your, your personal. Uh, yeah, buddy. Oh. Yeah, buddy. You know it. Lumen, Those Lumen are really scales. cool. Again. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a red, I'm red and black. You know that. I mean, I, do, I don't hide that fact at all. And I mean, you've got the gray handles on it, but golly, that thing just, oh, it speaks to me, man. It just looks really nice. <laughs> well, I, I really. Down there. Uh -oh. oh, no, just, just throwing out a teaser. Sorry. <laughs> it, it's bench made time now, not artisan time. <laughs> yes, that yes. Was... Behave, Russell. No, I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, that's funny. And I was going to say the 535 3 with the blue, uh, the, the lanyard. Uh, backspacer that mm -hmm. looks really nice as well oh that is it that is definitely a nice looking knife without it with without the carbon a doubt. fiber and yeah that that one yeah that is definitely a nice looking knife and i like it's it's nice because it's it's a little bit different with that whole lanyard you know the whole kind of it, it's 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 not what is it what would you call it what did you call it today zach integrated integral yeah it's like yeah it's like an integrated backspacer you know it, it reminds me of let me show you here it reminds me of the designs from you know rock scale when he put his backspacers and built those for the bug outs okay yeah yeah They're, you know it's it's got the same cutout but it, they just expose it on the scales okay yeah that you know, that's i think that's cool i think that's one of the things i like most about the releases i'm seeing from benchmade they're clearly watching and listening Mm -hmm. they're paying attention to what people are doing to the bug out outside of their sort of control they went we can do that mm -hmm. and so if for people that don't want to go the zach route which by the way your collection of modified bug outs <laughs> is absolutely out of this world brother oh but yeah yeah a lot of a lot of people don't have that they don't want to go online and chase down parts or chase down other you know what i mean they want it and, and so benchmade what great we'll just do it and how yeah, they, they just want to they just want to you know buy it and walk out the door with it well, I mean, I'll, I'll be, I'll speak to that. I am, I'm not really a knife modifier. I, I'm just really not, no, you know, not I, I buy I'm a knife. Either. I buy a knife that I want. You know what I mean? I mean, I've done a few little tweaks here and there, you know, an MXG clip or whatever, you know what I mean? Things like that. But I am, I am by no means a knife modifier. And what Zach does to the bug out. Um, yeah. You, you have a gorgeous, gorgeous collection of well i hope i've inspired some some of their their thoughts but i can only i can always only say that you know there's so many great people making aftermarket products nowadays oh of course of that, course you know it's like like peter said it's really nice to see that 
of manufacturers listening. And I think, you know, one of the things that we've experienced with all the shutdowns, um, closures and everything factory wise, you know, across the world is that new integrate, you know, that new model. Well, how do you want to say it? Thinking up new designs is, you know, it's it takes longer. People aren't sitting in the office together and they can't, you know, build something and go, Hey, come look at this. Let's try this out. Will this work? Now they have to like send it to somebody and you know what I mean? So it's like, you can't get that, that one-on-one face-to-face. And so it makes it harder. And so I think you're seeing, that's why you're seeing a lot of, you know, modified existing versions too across the board. And are we, you think we're looking at the, another year of the mini, do you think that's going to happen? I think so. You know, I mean, like I talked about, they did the the mini 945 with the aluminum scales that's coming out, you know, and that's just a, an extension of the, the mini 945 that they just launched here a month right. or so ago. Right. You know, boo. Um, boo. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, awesome. More, more tiny. Nine. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's, you know, to me, that's one of those things that I think they're building on it. I think we'll see more of the 945. I think we'll see more of the mini bug out. I mean, you can call the mini Adamas a mini, but I don't think it's a mini. Well, it's, it's like, like the mini Crooked River. It's just like the mini Crooked River. Yeah, yeah. the mini yeah, Crooked yeah. River is not a mini by any means. No, it is a full size knife. Size knife. <laughs> I mean, somebody, well, say, I was just talking to somebody last night. They're like, well, how does the mini Crooked River compare to the 940? And I'm like, um, it's the mini Crooked River is bigger than the 940. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it and, just that, is. and that surprises a lot of people. Um, you know, one new design they came out with, and you know, you guys probably heard me talk about it was the Claymore. Oh, that thing looks yeah. cool. You know, they came out with the Claymore. Um, it's an automatic push button. And to Ooh. me, you know, I mean <laughs> I, I live just, in a state where I can't have it, unfortunately. Yeah, so. that's and that's Same. and I really hope, like the others they've done, I really hope they come out with a manual version. Um, just because of the fact that, that would be it awesome. has the new um, CPM D2 teal, uh, tool steel. So it's got the, it's just a little bit different. It's the powder metal version of it. It's going to hold up a lot better. I don't know. I'm maybe Russell, maybe somebody else. You guys have had experience with the CPM D2. Uh, we've used a bit of K110 in some of our testing before, which okay. is similar, but that's, that's bullier. I'm actually not sure if it's powdered, um, but we have not used CPM D2 before. Yeah. So that one's interesting to me. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. CPM D2 is not new. I mean, it's been around a while. Mm -hmm. Um, It it got pushed out of the way by traditional D2, by our more traditional D2, but it's the same thing that you do when you get in any of the powdered steels. It refines the grain. It gives it a better edge retention. It gives it a lot of, like, really cool features. It's interesting that they've done that because they went crew wear with the Adamas, (laughs) <laughs> and then they settled back into what feels like they went, what's a cool steel we haven't used in, you know, in forever. And they, they kind of went backwards and brought it forward into the, in, sorry, into the future. But the, the handle shape on that makes me want one so bad. <laughs> and it's I'll really slick handle what, shape, gotta admit. I'll tell you what, it is very thin in both directions. Uh, yeah. I've got hands on with this one and it's, it's thin in the height. And then it's also thin in the width. So, you know, it's not going to take up a lot of hand space at all, but it's, and it snaps hard. It fires out like crazy. One of yeah, my favorite I heard him say on the live. Oh, I was just going to say, I heard him say on the live, watch out, it'll pop out of your hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I like Benchmade's autos. The Casbah is one of my all time favorite, just pocket knife, pocket knives, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but that thing really just, I mean, so now I have, a couple of bench maids and I've got to put money aside mm-hmm. for it. <laughs> and you did mention, you mentioned the auto, auto fat in your live earlier yeah. today. And that one, you know, I've kind of, man, I've, I've, ar- I've argued with myself about the fact for quite a while. And this, this one looks very interesting to me. Yeah. I mean, I'll get one and I'll send it to you because You'll have to try it out. It's definitely a really thin, I mean, if you've tried out any of the facts, it's got similar specs in the handle and the blade. Right. And this one being an auto, it's uh, it's an auto access. So there's no push button. Mm, gotcha. Yeah. Like that. You just basically pull back and it's good to go. Right. Right. Now, I mean, 
I, I do like my access lock, but now the auto access, I'm kind of, I'm a, I'm a little wavery on. Now, is that because of the auto? Yeah, well, I guess, you know, <laughs> it's, I mean, I don't know. It's, I, other than to say, it's just, you know, well, I mean, I don't deal with a lot of autos to begin with, like, because they're not legal here. And I have a couple, I have a couple, I got a ProTech, you know, and it's, I, I'm, I like the side, the side activated autos. I don't really care for OTFs at all, honestly. They're fidgety, mm -hmm. but I have plenty of flipper knives that are fidgety. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. And then uh, they came out with a couple others. They brought this one into more of a budget realm, and that's the Meat Crafter. Oh, the Meat Crafter. That is a really cool knife. Like, I have a friend who uses that for, and that is his Butcher EDC carry, because he is a butcher, mm -hmm. and that is a knife, well, the, the original version of that one that he carries everywhere. And you know oh, what? Wow. It is a slick knife. Mm -hmm. It's nice to yeah. see a more budget version, too, because the yeah. one they released last year was not... <laughs> yeah, I mean this one's this one's MSRP 160. You know, it's got the the orange Santa preen, so it's going to be a lot grippier. Right. So whether you're right. you know out in the field or you're using it to butcher stuff, it's going to be way easier to clean as well. Not that the original wasn't, but I mm -hmm. see this one as much more of a field knife. Field knife for it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that looks like trout trout uh, filleting to me mm -hmm. all day long. So. Mm -hmm. I, I can't say the name without laughing, but yeah. Is a, you know? I was about to make a joke there that was way too nerdy for this. For this, like, nope, don't, don't even go there. <laughs> so, so one other one that I want your guys' opinion on before I say anything. Okay. But their gold class for the year. The they made a flipper. Tengu gold class. The Tengu, right. Mm-hmm. I can I can definitely give you my thoughts on it, and it's just completely my. For me, there is it's just there's too much going on to it visually for me. I mean, and that's because I even have a hard time with just regular carbon fiber in Damascus. Gotcha. You know what I mean? And I mean, I'm trust me, I'm I'm not dogging on the knife or anything like that. It's just visually to me, I don't know. There's just a lot going on. You know, so that's why, I mean, I don't have any carbon well, fiber and Damascus knives. Well, I'll dog on it because I, I, I don't like the Tengu personally. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and, and admittedly, and admittedly, I'm, I, so, I mean, I currently have no Benchmades in my collection. Uh, and that's only because I, I, the one that I, I was a bug out person that was enough for me. I gave that to somebody. And so I don't, I don't have one anymore. And it's, you know, and so I'm, I'm the least qualified probably to, to make the comment, but of the, I've handled the Tengu. I'm just not a huge fan of it. And then what they've sort of done with it, it's just this, I don't know, it just looks really over the top to me. But I think that's partly it, maybe the it's point. Def it's definitely out. very busy. Was it popular enough as a knife in general to deserve gold class? Did they sell that well? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I want, because this is a really personal, particular knife. People that like it, like it. And yet, I don't see a lot of them out in the wild. So I'm wondering why. That's because it's not would... a good knife. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I don't know. I've never had Shots one. Fired. But I'm wondering. Shots fired. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm wondering. <laughs> it's just an interesting choice for them. With all the knives they have and all the unique and sort of well-known and cool knives that might deserve what is really an expensive treatment. I mean, gold class is outside my budget by leaps and bounds. Yeah, me too. To do a knife that most people kind of went, that's cool. It's weird to me. That's all. I, I, well, can, can, I think. Oh, go ahead, Russell. Can I weigh in here just as, just as a general knife guy, not as an artist rep? Because again, I, I don't have anything to say on the rep side of things, but just as a guy who likes knives, I actually really like this one. Um, and I don't. I have my benchmates. I have enough benchmates in my personal collection, but they tend to be older benchmates. I haven't really stepped into the newer benchmates. I have my my five thirty, my Griptilian. Great, they're they're my users. I like this one because I thought the Tengu was actually a very interesting knife that blended that traditional style really well with a more modern styling. I wish it had a clip, but that's just my thought. But I think this format, and after being with Artisan and working with a bunch of different materials, I think the way this is set up is incredibly unique looking. 
um, out of anything, this tie, I, I'm assuming that's tie, right, for the shield and not like Mogutai or whatever it's, it, or whatever it is, the blue and the blue lines. And I, that's Raf that's Rafir Noble in the back, right? And then the, the crazy carbon fiber. It is very striking. And I have found most of the other gold classes that I've sold when I worked, you know, when I worked retail selling knives, I found them to be a bit over the top, but just not over the top enough. They didn't contrast. They weren't striking. It was just like, all right, let's just, here's a bunch of different colors, but we can't be that colorful. It's like, we're, we're, you know, they couldn't be super bright, super energetic. This, for the first time in a long time, a gold class caught my eye. I'm like, wow, I don't know what I think about it. But for the first time in a long time, I, I'm actually sitting there going, well, it's got my attention. And mm -hmm. I, I begrudgingly, in some ways, I do like this. I like the way it looks. I don't think for me personally, I can throw down the chunk of change to get one of these, but I like the direction it's going. And it was, I think it's a little risky for Benchmade. Um, again, as Peter mentioned, I haven't seen a lot of Tengus in the wild, but um, it's certainly got something going on. And it's certainly got a serious uniqueness showing here that I think is admirable. Oh, it definitely has the uniqueness. It has that going for it. And, you know, I can't speak to the to the Tengu itself because I really haven't had I am strictly going on aesthetics that is strictly what I am going on it's just aesthetically for me it just my brain doesn't process it right or something that's like I said that's why I don't have any Damascus and, car and uh, carbon fiber knives because it just it's too much for me it's too much for you know. I I don't know how I don't know how to better explain it than that. It's just, I you know, that's it's just not my thing. That that's it. It's just not my thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One one thing I was I was great to see on this one, you know, the MSRP is five fifty. Um, we haven't hmm. seen that in a gold class in years. You that's know, true. the the gold class we had last year was, you know, the limited unlimited mini Crooked river, and I think that one was around. 750800 you know yeah. before that yeah. the year before that it was the mini bug or not the mini but the the bug out right you know right. and that one was still that one was still pushing what 7 750 so yeah. yeah i mean i like the i like the i guess the idea they're going out on a limb a little bit you sure with a different model and maybe sure. they're trying to bring a little bit of that to it but i think even with the regular one you know i've said this before you know, a pocket clip probably would have made a difference on this one, but it wouldn't be true to design for Jared Oser. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but yeah. Well, and you I said as well, good. you've seen, you've seen some mods that people have actually put pocket clips mm -hmm. on them. It'd be really interesting to see what it looks like just with one on it. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously it's probably not, it wouldn't be, you know, the mini split arrow or the mini deep carry or anything like that, you know, to be a true, true to bench made or maybe it was i don't know i haven't seen it mm -hmm. did the ones now you said you've seen somebody did they actually put a bench made clip on it yeah so they basically took this side of it and they put a mini deep carry right okay there on it okay and you know to me i i like that action you know it was like because i'm not gonna like a lot of people have said it's not going to be something that's convenient. You know, you get a beautiful leather pouch that goes inside there. You're going to put it in your pocket. How many times are you going to pull this out to use it? Well, Never. now see, I'll, Never. I'll, I'll throw the, I'll throw the, Never. I, I carry my, I carry a lot of my traditional knives and slips. I have no problem with slips. You know, I, I have absolutely no issue with it whatsoever because mm -hmm. I carry, um, I carry some knives and slips. I, I, you know, people talk about, you know, well, it doesn't look like you use it. Well, yeah, it's because I carry it in a slip, you know, just because <laughs> I, I want them, I want my knives to look nice, you know, mm -hmm. okay, you know, crucify me. I, I, I want to keep my stuff looking nice, you know, yeah. but it's, I have no issue with a slip. So, I mean, that, that aspect doesn't bother me a bit. Yeah. So overall, I think I'm really excited for the mini Adamas um, and the full size. And I'm also excited for, you know, the 945 and the original aluminum. Um, that Claymore is good. And I think definitely one of the things that I'm looking forward to is 
you know, what's the, what's the next limited edition? Yeah. You yeah. know, I mean, it's, that's, and that's just me as a bench made collector. Sure. Sure. All right. Well, let's see where we're going down the, we're going down the list. What do we got? How about, I know this is a topic Peter will probably like, but how about cold steel? We've seen some releases from cold steel. Um, I know cold steel, there's been a whole lot said about cold steel, you know, it sailed the GSM and so on and so forth. And I think, I know Peter has said it and a few other people said it. And I, I think I agree that pretty much 2021 is set. You know, this whole switch between Cold Steel and GSM Cold Steel really isn't going to affect 2021 a whole lot, at least in the beginning of the year. But it looks like Cold Steel is bringing back some, they're bringing back some models, which is nice. So you want to, you want to give us your thoughts on that, Peter? You know, um, well, I mean, that's what I said from the beginning, right? That the knives for this year, we're already in production when the sale went through. Uh, this will be the first generation of knives with the new Cold Steel logo. Uh, they've changed it a little bit. Um, there are some really interesting and very sort of traditionally Cold Steel crazy things going on. Um, that fixed blade that you just had on the screen. Right there. That one really, I love that. That's just a good looking knife. Um, and of course, you know, they've brought back the Formax, only they've done it in uh, S35VN. Yeah. So a whole bunch of people who have wanted a Formax, but, you know, they ended up getting the, the Formax Scout, which is a great knife. If they really like it, they can now upgrade. And there's, I'm sure it's going to be expensive, but I, there's no way that the new Formax in S35VN is going to be as expensive as the old CPM 20 CV version. So they found sort of a middle point. I just think that's fantastic. I'm trying to find it for you, Peter. The only thing I've got is the YouTube page. You're going. I, I kind of got to flip through. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's the 8015 so, light. Yeah, that's the new 8015 light. That is in, uh, that's in, uh, sorry, that's in the new OS 10. OS 10, yeah. That's in OS 10. Uh, that is going to sell cool. like absolute wildfire because it's going to cost a hundred bucks or whatever, yeah. right? As opposed right. to the 190 or $200 that they're going for now. Right. Um, that's a genius maneuver by whoever was in charge of picking knives in the old company. <laughs> you know, that is really amazing. And a couple of knives down the list from where you are now is the new, uh, keep going. Oh, yeah. There's the Voyager. Almost. He's almost there. Well, that's, that's a fixed blade I'm interested in. The Pendleton? Uh-huh. I kind of like the looks of that. They, it's a great hand. I don't know if you ever held one before, but they're really comfortable. I have not. I have not. There's the Voyager. That one. That one's kind of interesting. Now I'm. I'm. Oh, the Talwar. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness, really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. I'm going. What do we got? There we go. There There's the Formax. Yep. So, and that's in. That's an S35VN, right? It is. Yeah. And so I have. I have some thoughts on this. I think that whoever was in charge of picking these knives knew what was coming. I think that they deliberately, the Talwar in particular is one of the knives that Cold Steel fans have been crying out for for a couple of years. Uh, <clears throat> and I think that whoever was in charge knew that this year's run needed to be really, really good to keep people from losing their minds. And they've done it. You know, they've brought back some classics in new ways. They've re-released, you know, they've got a whole bunch of recon minis now that are actually sort of recon mediums yeah, um, yeah you know they've released the golden eye but now is the silver eye i mean they've just taken a whole bunch of their classic <laughs> knives that people loved but avoided a little bit for whatever reason too expensive to whatever right and made them much more attainable and that's just good business the double safe hunter that's an interesting one mm -hmm. um let's go i'm trying to find it um what do you guys think you guys, well, you know what you know what I'm going to tell you. You know which one catches my eye right away. Come on now, the I'm getting one? there. Oh wow, well, it's not just a red one, Peter. Mm -hmm. But yes, the red one. <laughs> that, one. <laughs> that one. Oh, that one's going to catch my eye. It just is, you know. And it's now. It's there's a few different of the Slock Master, Slock Master or S Lock. Help me out. I, I honestly don't know where let's go with that slot. That sounds much I know that was kind of weird. I was, was like, I was like, what is a slock master? I you don't, don't want to know. That's yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't want to know, but 
that one definitely catches my eye but and then and they brought in a whole of the, bunch of the holdouts yeah the full serrated and stuff that's just i'm not i'm not a full serrated guy at all i'm not even a well serrated. if you if you're cutting up brisket on video big, well, yeah. big shout out to uh, jimmy slash yeah if you're cutting up brisket on video those full serrations are awesome um you know, I do my knife fight <laughs> in my videos because I because of a story that Lynn Thompson told about a friend of his that got in a knife fight with the uh, Spartan. I think it's ridiculous. I've been I'm I'm I've been other than this person you see before you today, and somehow I've managed to never get in a knife fight at a gas station. But if you're gonna those full serrated knives, that's what they're built for. They're not built really for daily work. Those are built to rend flesh, and so I have no interest in them. But people love them. Oh yeah. I imagine it's the same people who want to buy the shield that's on here and the mace. Oh, the buckler. <laughs> those things are yeah. those yeah. things are something. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That mace is uh we, I gotta find I mean if they, they sell a helmet, they're pretty much all set. You can just cold <laughs> steel, go. Go steel full polypropylene helmet. Yeah, right. on that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Battle of Nations ready helmet. Yeah, there you go. go. Oh there my god, come on. You. Peter, you mean you're not buying that mace? I, well, duh. Hell, I want one. Have I want one. one of those. That looks awesome. <laughs> well, I have a question. Base for home defense. Right. Man, I'm sorry, but me coming out of the bedroom in my underwear in the middle of the night to scare you back out of my house carrying that mace and that shield, you're leaving. Trust me, yeah. brother. You do not need a mace and a shield for that. You come out. You, no. Hey. hey uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got too many jokes sorry. to make there, Peter. I am not going there. But seriously, right. you know, the funny thing is you can carry a baseball bat in your car and explain it. How do you carry a mace in your car and make that make sense? You get pulled over. What? What's this? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I work Renaissance fair. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I've, ma I've made that excuse a few times. And it's worked. I, yeah, oh, I, was la I was LARPing in the park earlier today. <laughs> LARPing. <laughs> LARPing in the park. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's a good one. Well, all right, Casey. All right, Casey. Since you're jumping in with LARPing in the park there, um, give us some thoughts on some of the knives that you, you're you're thinking about, you know, and are interested in coming out this year. Uh, we still talking cold steel, or you can just talk talking... about anything you want, man. You talk oh about my anything goodness! You want. I mean, there's Kershaw, well, there's CRKT. The uh, I'll jump over real quick. Uh, let's see if I can get my camera pointed at my laptop without like killing you guys here. Um, this this uh, well, sorry, if you can even see it there. The uh, SOG is coming out with a new version of the Terminus, uh, a light version, or they're calling it the. Uh, Terminus LT uh, Light Edition LTE, um, and this has S35 steel, I believe, and it's about an, a little over an ounce lighter. Um, I, I think that's super cool, and I love the carbon fiber look to it. So that's that's kind of one that had sort of caught my eye. Saug has decided to go uh, bug out hunting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, at 2.2 ounces, I mean, I. I you know, I do, this particular version has sort of a gold uh, colored blade, which I think is also kind of interesting. I don't know what the coating is. I haven't gotten that far, but um, uh, I, I think it's, it's, it can be very interesting in that regard. Uh, kind of gives it a new look. And uh, also, you know, like I said, it's a, they, they put it on a weight loss program. That's the, ultra, that's the Ultra XR, the one you were talking about, right? The Ultra XR no, and carbon and gold. It's the no, it's the it's called the Terminus XR LTE. LTE. All right, I'm trying to yeah, I'm light, trying to light find it to help look. So last year when Sog released, I have still have I have four of them. I have four Sogs. I went from none to four because of their what they were doing. Oh, there and it is. I, I'd said I really hope they leaned into this new, you know, the XR lock and and leaned into what they were doing. A lot of companies produce a great knife and then sort of walk away from it. Right, uh, Kershaw is a great example. They'll produce a great knife or two, and then a whole bunch of stuff in 4CR14 pot steel. I don't, whatever. That's their jam. <laughs> Sog has remade a bunch of their old knives using what I'm going to call their new build quality model. I even have one. This is the Kiku uh, Assisted. This is an older knife that they've re-released. They did it. They, they put it back out in their micarta. It's a button lock assisted knife. Whatever. It's funky but it's really well made. And so they're absolutely, whoever's in charge of their stuff has figured out 
that this is they're gonna I think they're gonna do it. I'm not saying they're still not gonna make a bunch of you know big five level stuff for all, for all the users. It's awesome, but they are clearly leaning into better knives, better materials, well good quality builds, so that those of us that love nerd love knives, there's something for us. It's so, really cool. uh, so I, yeah, so I agree with a lot of that, Peter. I think for me, part of the concern, well, I mean, and, and listen, SOG is a Washington company, right? So I'm, I'm always excited to see our companies start to, you know, and SOG was so dormant for a while in terms of anything interesting or new. The, the gripe I have with SOG, it, 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 while I, I agree that their newer models have really caught, I mean, a lot of them caught my interest this last year, but they're still too expensive the materials i think and my god can they just not assist one of them i mean it, it apart from the xr it's like it's just all assist all assist everywhere and and their assists are really good i mean their assists i mean i don't know how they differentiate between assist and auto because man that thing they fly out of there but and i agree with you i think they're right exactly i mean i think their build quality is there i think they they've they've gone with the designs that have been more appealing the colorways etc but I still think they're trying. I think they need to find that sweet spot on price a little bit, and and they yeah, just well, need to move away from some of that assistance. And and one thing I was going to say on me. this one, it's one hundred thirty nine dollars. So so and again, it's well, the, right exactly right. Right. So so again, I'm excited about the fact that it's lighter. I'm excited about uh, the materials and the way it looks. Uh, but you're right. That is that that's quite pricey. Is, is it for? S35 VN and carbon fiber is 139 bucks, or is it because it's a SOG? I, th I think a, we're, I think maybe because you're, you're so used to this one. And again, I, I guess it's just a jump, but I, I agree with you. I, I mean, I, I, I understand what you're saying, by the way, can you even see that? There you go. Um, yeah. And, 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 and so I, I think you're correct. I think you're making a big jump from D2 to the s35 and it's got the, the coated blade and the carbon fiber and the so so you're probably right you're you're probably right it's just a number that when you first look at it you're like eh, i don't know it, but it's a fair question i think a lot of american companies especially the ones that have a, a history of making real gas station knives you know the stuff that you pick up at the at the when you're at the bait shop on your way out to the boat um they, they've put themselves in a really weird spot. They have to charge a little more and because they're not, you know, whatever their manufacturing is, they've got a different setup than the companies that can produce, you know, similar knives at 90 or hundred bucks. But they, they've got a mountain to overcome, which is a mountain of, of stuff that nobody wanted. And then, so, you know, if you're used to your SOG knife calling, you know, costing 39.95 at big five, and now this is 139, eh, but on the other hand, I just think that the, the ones that I have, you know, like this thing, the, the, the Kiku XR from last year, God, this is a fantastic pocket knife. This is 180 bucks or 190 bucks. I can't see. <laughs> Thanks, JB. Um, but to me, as a knife collector and someone with a broad selection of knives from a bunch of different companies and a bunch of different materials and manufacturing styles, this is totally worth the money. Yeah, but, uh, it's you know, the hard you, sell. You know, you get a you get a Hogue in 20 CV and and Lava G10 for 140 bucks, still American made, still all that. I mean, that's I don't know. I mean, I think 20 CV is a jump from S35, and I think it's overall a nicer knife than the than the Terminus. But again, I mean, I, yeah. I get what you're saying. I don't disagree. With no, what I mean, you're I, I think it's a really good point. Uh, you know, it, it's interesting how some companies manage to do that. Hogue in general. But, you know, some of their knives are 250 bucks. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. there's a part of me that wonders if, if part of their intel, there you go. He's got the, uh, the, the K320, yeah. K320. You know, uh, that's 120, 115, something like that. Right. But I feel like those companies know how to market better. Like, I sometimes I wonder if the, uh, if the Hogue Deca, which is what you're talking about, is really that inexpensive or if they're willing to eat it a little bit and sell the other knives at a higher price so that it you know what i mean like they well, have... i think that's exactly right i mean i always have thought that the only way i think they're doing that is by subsidizing it from some other sale or from their grips or i don't know what it is but, but yeah i mean because that it, hogue has really been pushing the the value i think in a, in a lot of ways over the last couple of years and i don't know how they're doing that exactly um but and i think companies... probably are I think they're probably eating it a little bit somewhere else. 
So companies like SOG either haven't quite figured that out or they're so amazed that they're making money anyway. <laughs> they're just like, let's go. Right, right. right. The, best, the best thing about the new model, though, is this, in my opinion, hideous looking clip. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. is now a normal looking clip yeah. uh and, and i just look I, I you can billboard you can do whatever you want but this goes beyond billboarding to me yeah <laughs> this is just yeah. like in your face and i i don't care for that but i mean i <laughs> bought totally. it obviously <laughs> yeah but i'm so, sorry so that, the new... that pocket clip reminds me of those dudes that wear the big belt buckles that say their name on them <laughs> <laughs> you know bob right, <laughs> right? well and i mean <laughs> that's that is one of those things. I think that's definitely a holdover, you know, from old SOG, let's say. Okay. Right. And we'll just Aren't... call it. And I know they're, I know they're really trying to move forward and for, for lack of a better term and, you know, anybody in SOG that sees this, I, you know, forgive me, but they need to get their reputation back. I, that's my opinion. SOG really yeah, needs to get their reputation us... You know, are they still letting us call them SOG? Well, and that's just it, it. They're trying to, I think they're trying to get away from that as well. But the problem is we're still going to say it. I mean, I, <laughs> it, it's just awkward to me to say SOG. What do you think of that, Zach? I mean, it's. I don't know. Like, I think if, you know, if you have a, a, a company name and it's branded and it's out there and you're going to stick with it, you have to just stay with it. You know, it would be yeah. like. Yeah, it would be like a company, you know, a company coming out like Kershaw coming out or ZT coming out saying, you need to call us zero tolerance now the whole time. You know, <laughs> well, um, no, and that's, that's a great, that's a think, very good point. But, that's a good point. And that's only, and that's only half of it because it's like, I don't know, you know, when I first bought my first SOG, I didn't know what SOG stood for. Yeah, but aren't, right? aren't they writing it on the blade now? Aren't they putting they it? Are. Yeah. Yes, Wait, they are. Stance or something? Yeah. Studies and observation <laughs> group. Yes. And right. it's, that's what I think they're trying to, you know, okay, am I going to say studies and observation group or am I going to say SOG? I'm lazy. I'm I, think that, say SOG. I think they're trying to re-educate on their brand. And I, I actually, oh, no, I, I, I completely agree with that. With that. I, I, I completely agree with that. No, no. And I, and I agree with you too. And I, I just think yeah, I agree with that. I mean, they're SOG. They're always going to be SOG, but exactly. I think they're trying to get people to actually know that it's not just a weird word or acronym that it actually right. means something right. their company has a heritage i mean i think that trying to trying to pe get people to see the value in a company that's not you know that we we come from this long lineage of you know whatever it is they want to claim um, that's all you know i don't have any problem i mean it's all going to be marketing but and if their knives stand up to it then you know whatever but all right. Well, I tell you what. Let's quit bashing on Sog. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> we got to no. look. We're we're. Uh, let's. I'll keep. I'll keep us moving. This is gonna be a long one. Nobody's gonna watch it. And I'm no. That's not true. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it over and over because you guys are awesome. But let's. We got. Let's see. We got Kershaw ZT and CRKT to go through. Um, anybody want to throw out a model? Well, I will. I'll throw out a model right right off the bat from from Kershaw that really interests me. And that's the 2090. I really like the look of that knife. Yep. You no, know, we're talking double detent. I like, I like the look of that knife. It, there again, it's kind of my clean lines. It's got a little bit of, got a little bit of stuff going on there on the handle. Kind of looks like a topographical map, maybe, you know, <laughs> Funky. but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. And let's see if it'll bring me up. They don't want to look at me. They want to look at you guys. But I mean, we got a little bit going on there. But I want to. I like that. I like the look of the twenty ninety. Have you guys got anything? We checked them out. Uh, some what, what's the new? Uh, the 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 not nausea. Um, it's a four and a half inch knife, and I can't. I and I just pre ordered the thing because I'm dying to get one in my hands. Okay, um, let me look. Uh, are you talking about the yeah, it's a Kershaw. Stra the Strata, the Strata is that the one you're talking about? Is that oh, it? The Strata, the Strata XL. Yeah, that's it. There it is. Yeah, yeah the Strata XL. There we go. Let's yeah. bring that one up. That one right yep. there. That's oh, a crazy come on looking now. <laughs> you liking that so, one, Peter? You liking that one? I love one? that knife. Yeah, okay. I, it looks I, like it would lock into your hand really well with the. It chip. does. It certainly Th does. You know, JB, it's funny because I, I think that blade really reminded me when I when I checked it out. It looks it's like a Culpepper blade they put on there. <laughs> yeah. A little bit. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That clip point. Yeah. 
Got to admit, Navajas are kind of in. Navajas are kind of becoming yeah. a bit more in now. And I think that shape was really cool. And the fact that the, the small one is, I think, still three and a half inches. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, but my my feeling on this is, is Kershaw's got, they've got four or five now in their D2, in D2 steel that they're really proud of. Now, I have one from last year, and I can't remember the name of it to save my life, but it's, you know, it's still a metal frame. It's still kind of heavy, but the actual knife was really well done and it was about 60 yeah. bucks yep you know um i i thought last year was kershaw's best year in a long time personally just in terms okay. of some of the some of the throwback they did with their little three series of you know traditional knives i think yeah the static yep. the, little, the weird little gravel i mean they've put out some interesting little and i agree i mean they're all heavy and weird and they got these weird names that you know the parsec and the tremolo and you know whatever but i think they're trying to up their game a little bit and i think they've kept their prices reasonable for what you're getting i think these days i still agree though that the pot steel comment that somebody made i mean it's like good god could we just you know just do just at least just do the 8CR at least don't be doing this weird <laughs> you know well but. last year i felt powerfully like what kershaw did is they released two or three knives in d2 and didn't charge a lot for them and in order to compensate for that they sold a whole bunch of stuff in i mean look the, they were selling knives in blade steel that they used to make their scales out of no yeah, 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 yeah. you know like 4CR 14 and and 7CR it, it was a weird moment. You're right. They produced some cool, fun, interesting knives that if they had just left the other 70 knives in the catalog off, it would have been a great <laughs> Kershaw year. But they didn't. Yeah, I think that's accurate. Yeah. Well, I, um, think, that, that's I right. think we see that with a lot of these, you know, the bigger companies and stuff. They're, they're putting out, they put out a lot of models, right? I mean, and the, kind of the way I look at it is my, my theory is, would I want to see 20, 25 models or would I really want to see 10 really good, well done models? What, what, yeah. What's your guys thought on that? I mean, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. 10 good models. I think, I think it, I, I, yeah, but I think it depends. I mean, I, I don't disagree with that. I'd rather see 10 good as well, but I think, I think it's the apples and oranges between a, you know, and Russell's still on the line, I assume, of like an artisan cutlery. Or, I got, I got or, things to say on this one, but go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. Or, you know, or a Kershaw where the vast majority of Kershaw knives are designed for a whole different audience, right? They are not designed for the people on this call or on this Zoom, right? I mean, they're, they're designed for all kinds of different <laughs> things. And so their business model is dependent on having a million different things that they get stuff in blister packs and put all over the world. No, I think no, that I mean, is. It, I think that is extremely accurate, uh, Brad. I think you're exactly right. They're not. They're not necessarily made for the enthusiast or the collector or some. They're made for somebody that, you know, I broke my knife. I'm running to Walmart. I'm grabbing a knife because I need a knife. That's kind of oh, some of the models, not all of them, but some of them. Yeah. No. I mean, and, and it doesn't mean you know, and, and I agree with. I agree 100% with what Peter was saying. I mean, it's like, it's disappointing when you're like, wow, this is another good design. Oh, it's, is that even metal? <laughs> I don't even know if that's even a metal. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, well, I, I, go, I go back and forth on Kershaw because of that, for that very reason. I agree. Because I like their launch series. I like their launch series. I like that they do it in 150, uh, it's CPM, isn't it? I think it's CPM 154. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, I think they do a nice job with that launch series. And, and I think their prices are pretty reasonable for it but they really do run the spectrum in terms of. Yeah. If I could add something to this on, on the production line of stuff that uh, we are not ever going to be at that type of knife production style that Kershaw is doing. They are producing so many knives in such quantities for such a large audience. Whereas essentially when you look at companies like us and we knife and best tech, we're producing for enthusiasts. We're producing right. for the slightly more in the know crowd at price points that are similar to what you see from a Kershaw. We make stuff for people like you guys, even though they're priced like Kershaw. But, you know, it, and at some point you end up seeing Artisan and CGRB and Big Five or Cabela's, that would be great. We would be so happy. You'll probably also be seeing a lot more 8CR from us too, which I'd be sad about. But yeah, if it's just a very different side of the industry. It's kind of this whole thing where, companies like ours aren't really competing with Kershaw 
on right. the same turf. Right. We're not. I think we're he's not... calling. I think he's calling us knife snobs, guys. <laughs> he'd be he'd be totally wrong. Yeah. Of course, no. Peter can attest to how absolutely not knife snobby I am. <laughs> yeah, am I, Peter, am I a knife snob? No, not at all, man. You're. <laughs> <laughs> no, you really aren't. You like knives that you like, and it, it, you're willing to, you know, there's there's a, a humongous spectrum of steels and stuff that you bring into it, and you're not, you know, you're not against it. And I'd like to believe, as a user, I'm the same way, but in my collection, <laughs> it's a slightly different, you yes, know. yes. We, we all like what we like, but I think kind of this whole thing about uh, right. for the Kershaws and the Calorie Rivers and the, and the Schrade and the, uh, the Gerbers of the world, like, Yes, we have this kind of like, there's a bit of, mm, mm, we look at them a little weird, but at, if you're if you're trying to go to a Walmart and it's the only thing you can get on your way to, you, you, you drop your knife out of your car, your truck on the way to work, you really need where you're going to go do like a roofing job. You need a tool that you can rely on, look at the brand, say, hey, I like this. And then you end up going there and saying, whoa, this knife is awesome. Like, man, that is a nice thing. And um yeah, I just feel like, you know, for for companies that are smaller and that are a bit more in, we got to keep up appearances a certain way. Uh, we need to, like for us, for Artisan and CGRB, we got to put out the newest, the hottest, the most interesting, the most innovative all the time. But as with regular sales and as with, you know, as sales seems to happen, um, the average knife buyer tends to be about two years behind the curve. Like, like here, this is one reason. Cleaver fever is still in full swing. Our data says, yes, you know what knife sells really well? The Crag. The Crag is one of our best-selling knives. The Crag, the Feldspar, and um, actually, yeah, the Crag and the Feldspar are two of our best-selling sell- CGRBs. Um, I will say the Feldspar for the, the attention it got over time. The Crag, because everyone just likes cleavers. And I think for, you know, for me as a guy who's been part of this industry for a while, cleavers are a little passe. But the regular crowd likes them and they like what they like and they use them and they enjoy them. And I think that's, that's great. Well, and I think it's not only that, right? Okay. We're talking about Kershaw and we're giving Kershaw a bad time, right? Um, Cool stuff. They have cool things. No, they do. They do. And it's not only because they make a wide variety of knives because there are a wide variety of people out there that, you know, there's people that can afford a Kershaw hot wire. Mm Mm-hmm. There's people that can afford a CJRB Centros. There's people that can afford an artisan whatever, or there's people that can afford a Benchmade, what, you know, and we can just go higher and higher and higher up the line because there's such a wide variety of people out there and, and users and collectors, whatever you want to put them. And that's, that's the one thing that I, I do like about companies like Kershaw is because they make that wide variety. Mm-hmm. Now, it's something to love, that's for sure. Now, I'll tell you what, uh, the hot wire gets a lot of hate. I, I, I love the right hot wire. <laughs> I love it. It's a $10 I got knife. One right I got here. it at Walmart. Is it the best <laughs> knife ever made? No. No. Not even remotely. But you know what? I like that knife. I like that knife. So you I'm bring up an interesting. Big... Sorry, I, I was going to say, I'm not a big assistant guy and I don't. I don't carry this much. I'll be honest with you, but I mean, there's, there's literally nothing wrong. I mean, it'll work. It will cut, it will do its thing. It's exactly. not what I typically carry, but exactly. yeah, there so, you go. I, I guess what I, I wanted to look, I, I'm not, I like budget knives. I have a, I have a, a whole roll of them just cause I think they're fun and cool. Yeah. Yep. But I think what we were actually saying is that Kershaw is one of those companies. They make some good Budget knives, they make some good medium price knives. They make a few knives that are a little more expensive for them and they make good ones there too. And then they also kind of flood the market with stuff that I wouldn't give to someone. No, oh, there's I think a, that's there's exactly a difference. Right. And, and yeah. what I guess all I'm saying is that I wish Kershaw would focus on, because they've clearly got the, the manufacturing and they've got the skill and they've got the designers and they've got the people. If they just focused on the, instead of the $15 stuff, make $25 stuff. And then kind of moved up a little because I'd love to be able to do like a whole ch- like this month on a therapeutic edge. It's all Kershaw. I would be so happy because yeah. I started with Kershaw. Yeah, yeah, right. So I guess that's what I'm saying. It isn't. I, I I don't mean to brag on them. I love the stuff that they produce. That's good. They make great knives. I just wish that they would stop doing 
the other stuff because what happens is people say oh should i buy a kershaw and i have to say i don't know which one yeah and that's the hard no, part. I mean, yeah 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 you're right i mean i, I started on kershaws i mean when i was a kid, yeah. that was me too. Me too. Kershaws. and you know i i love this little matrix it's a great little knife I, those are slick. You know, I still like, like those. I ordered a pistol yeah. not that long ago. And you know, it was about the same price as a as a as a Rhea. And I threw the epistle in the garbage, literally just threw it away. Because <laughs> I was like, this is garbage. This is not a good knife. And for, yeah. for a variety of reasons. And it costs just about as much as a Rhea. And they're not even on the same playing field. And so I think what frustrates us as knife people sometimes is seeing people buying that stuff and you and you're just going oh my god don't buy that there's so much better you can get for literally the same price or maybe slightly different and i think that's something that is a weird problem that we have <laughs> i see i see you zach I see, I see you just went up there i see that i like the look on russell's face when he put that biome up there <laughs> so i think this actually this is a great place let's let's do zt real quick because yes, i think this yes, is a great yes, place let's, to actually let's step definitely, over let's definitely t talk about zt um, go, go, I can't wait to hear this. I know where Peter's going. Go, Peter. Okay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look, I love my 308, and I didn't when I first got it. It took me a while to get into that knife, but to paint the blade and make it black and sell it for, it's going to end up on the market for probably about $35 more than the one I bought. What are you guys doing? I, I, look, I, I have a huge ZT collection. I probably have 20 ZTs. And I love the I love the knives they make, but this year it's a little bit like last year. I think they released three knives. This year they're pretty, they're putting out three knives in the first quarter. They say there might be some more later, but there's no promises. What are we doing? Like, what are we doing? Anyway, that's that's my complaint. Go on. <laughs> well, I mean, I I really liked what they did with the 0707 and the detent, detent system. For people like me with dumb fingers. That, that just always get in the way of the frame lock. I mean, um, I mean I'm mean, i being honest. Um, the tune detent system, I loved it. I loved it. You know, and we've got, I see what, I see four models that they're putting out and only one of them has the tune detent. So I'm a little, you know, that's the 0762. So I'm a little like, okay. Is it, is that it a is, thing? Is it not a thing? That's very disco, by the way, that knife. <laughs> What you getting down um, tonight, Peter? You bet, man. All right. And, All if, right. If, if that thing had LEDs built into it, it would go really good. Anyway, I look. I just I don't get. ZT has got such a lineage, such a history of of making. To me, I love my ZTs. It's one of the brands that I have that if I had to get rid of everything else, I got to tell you, the ZTs. I would. There's two or three knives from that company. I would just keep. I'd fight for it. Um, I don't know what they're doing. And I'm not sure they do either, and that's what bugs me. And now, who am I? Fuck, I don't know. Excuse my language. Heck, I don't know. That's all right. I don't know the complexities of knife design at their level. I have no idea. But I also know that the last couple of years have been really weird from them, and I wonder if they're restructuring or rebuilding or re I don't know what they're doing. And maybe that's the thing. I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they don't yeah. either. Maybe they don't. <laughs> so when people say, should I get one of these new ZTs, I have to go, uh, maybe. Yeah, wow. no, it's I, I hear you. I, I get what you're saying. And it's, you know, I know a lot of people were, a lot of people were saying, I want my big clunky ZTs back. I've heard that. I don't know how many times I want my big ZT, you know, and they came out with the 0707. Definitely not in that. Right. I liked, I liked the 0707. I like the more slender knives. That's me. But I mean, I mean this, I'm, I'm looking at the 0308 here and I mean, other than the tiger stripes, never been a big fan of that. I mean, I, I, it's kind of there, kind of. What bothers me about this is I don't, th th so that, look, I'm stuttering. I'm so upset. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh, we're, we're going to hear from It's coming, here. it's coming. Now, look, I love mine. I have this knife, and that's the point. I already have this knife. Yeah. Don't tell me this is a new release for 2021 <laughs> because you slapped a new, paint, a new coat of paint on it. Right. Right. Like I and then charge me. By the way, the, the mine was three hundred, a little under three hundred. It says three twenty here. Right. Yeah. So I yeah. mean, like I said, they're charging basically twenty five dollars, twenty twenty five dollars more for the tiger stripe. Um, don't do that. 
just release that knife. Be like, hey, we this is a new version of a model you guys have already had. Do that separately from your big new 2020, 20, you know, don't make that the 21 release picture. Right. Because that's not a new knife. Under any stretch of the imagination, it's a year, it's a year now, it's a little, uh, almost a full year old. Yeah. Um, and that weirds me out just because I was so looking forward. I thought maybe that maybe this knife was going to be the progenitor to a whole line of big, beefy, cool ZT knives. Sure. sure. And instead, they gave me the same knife I already have. Thanks. I mean, yeah. Who are you? Yeah, no, I get you. I get you. All right. I hear I'm you. done. I rant, vent off. Sorry. Anybody else? <laughs> anybody else have anything they want to throw out in, on, in regards to Kershaw ZT? Well, I'll throw something out there. I know Go for I it. was looking at it and I was like pretty excited because, you know, I'm a, a fan of the 0450, the 0450, the Sinkovich. Mm-hmm, I got mm-hmm. that one, I'm digging that one. Been checking out those, you know, slip joint ones with the 0220 and 21. Mm-hmm. And I was excited to see what they're coming out with because I just picked up one of the 0707 and I'm like, man, here we go. Here's their launch. And I, I kind of had the same impression. I was like, uh, what? What are we doing? <laughs> and, well, exactly. You know, exactly. I, I talked about the one thing uh, on one of my lives where they did a video breakdown of one of the knives and there's like 45 parts. Yeah. And I'm like, how, how is it so complicated? You yeah. know, when, when <laughs> CRKT puts out a field strip up, update this year and it's like three parts. Right. 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 When yeah. No, part, you know? <laughs> very valid, very valid point. I'm just like, okay. Yeah. See, that's and I think I that's have. the, I mean, I've never been a huge ZT guy and I mean, there's the, they, trust me, they make some cool knives. There's some models that I really like. The only ZT I had, I don't own anymore because Nelly stole it from me, but <laughs> I mean, it's just the truth, but I, I was really, really excited when the 070, 0707, if I can say it, <laughs> 0707 there we go i was so stoked when i saw that i was like oh here we go here we go and then i see the new releases and i'm like peter is like okay we got a different color of one we saw last year and only one tuned dean tent in four knives i was just like okay all right well well that happened okay what what, what else is coming out for 2021 i mean that's kind of how i did it you know that's what i that was my reaction you know what they need to do is they need to produce a shield and a mace. <laughs> oh, so damn. I, I, I totally, I would throw my money at ZT for that. <laughs> all right, all right. There's Kershaw and ZT. How about CRKT? What are you guys, what are you guys thinking about CRKT? Um, Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> okay. Uh, CRKT continues to be the knife company that I get most consternation from this company of any company that's out there. And here's why they have phenomenal designers. They produce beautiful knives. Um, They just don't make very, very good ones. (laughs) You had had one that whatever that one we had last year, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it, it showed up with rust on it. So they make, I, I very much, I wish there was a, I wish there was a CRKT plus, like a, a, a step up in their brand marketing where they produce the same knives or a whole bunch of the same knives they produce at this level, right? But they cost 200 bucks because I'd want them. <laughs> I really would. Um, I don't know. I, I think that, yeah, like the, the, Brad's got one in his hands right now. I love that knife. It's a great pocket the knife. Helix. The helix, but if that was made out of better materials, like that's one of oh, the. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. The, the helical. Hel- helical. The helical. Yeah, yeah, but you know what? I, helical. Yeah, whatever it is. I can't get it to center though for anything. It won't center and ever. That's, you tighten it up. It's one of those things where you normally tighten it. And it's like, oh, that'll fix the centering. Tightening it actually makes it worse. I mean, I don't, and, it's just it's the, yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking. But about. it's not a bad knife. No, they don't make yeah, a bad. It's knife. like it could be a neat knife. They don't make a yeah, bad awesome. knife. They just don't make really good ones. It's like they, they stop short of producing, like even Kershaw is now making this line with the D2 and they've got good build quality and the knives come centered and they flip really well. I just wish that, and CRKT makes some very expensive knives in like 1.401, whatever that kitchen steel is, which is really weird to me. Right. I wish they'd figure out how to do that middle lane and just do it because their designs are astonishing. They're beautiful and fun and cool. I just can't. Yeah. I don't know. That's just. I mean, that has been. That's been my. 
love hate relationship with CRKT the, the, the whole time. It's like, man, this is an awesome design. I really want to check that out. I get it in hand. The fit and finish is, I'm going to say lackluster. It's a good word. And materials are like, okay, I just, uh, you know, I, I wish I wouldn't have paid that much for this. <laughs> You know, I mean, and that's, I mean, I'm just, I'm just trying to be honest, you know, and it's, that's the thing. And like, I'm like you, the, the designs, man, I've seen so many of them that I'm like, oh, dude, dude, I love the design and I get it in hand and I'm like, hmm, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. It's just, to me this year it, from CRKT, it was like, let's assist everything. Right, and they have a new assist that they're very proud of uh, on a bunch of their knives that is so contrary to, you know, uh, we as knife nerds that, you know, we know that that's not what our, like the collector's level thing wants, but I have to confess, I'm going to get one just to try it because uh, Blade HQ had a couple on there and apparently um, the assist is just at that, it's the kick out point. So they snap open very easily, but you can close them one handed very easily. Okay. So, okay. If, you know, I mean, if they're going to do smart assist, then I'm like I said, I'll, I'll pick some up. I totally want to try them out, but I just wish they would. And I am, I am not against assisted knives at all. I'm not, I have no issue with assisted knives, but that was the first thing I heard, you know, when they said, okay, we're going to assist the LCK, LCK, we're going to assist this. And everybody's like, why are you assisting all these knives? Cause that's all I hear from people is I want to de-assist that. Can I be right. assisted? Right. I was like, oh, right. I, yeah, okay. You know, uh, Benchmade has figured out how to make a market for knives that people want to modify for a lot of really great reasons. Uh, CRKT has gone the wrong way. They've created a whole bunch of knives that people want to un want to modify because they didn't come very. That's it, I, I don't know. I, I want them to be successful. I want no, I mean, them to be successful. No, I'm I'm right there with you. I'm right there. I just I mean it's like we talked earlier about modding, right? And I think that's exactly what you're striking on here, which is right. You have to <laughs> it's like when you buy a CRKT, you have to finish it when it gets to you. It's like it's your job to like make the knife usable and functional. And I just I mean that's probably too critical, but I I don't know. I just I No Brad, no, I, I will I will absolutely agree steel. with you because the ones that I had right at the well, beginning of the year. Uh oh it's weird to me well and that's the the ones i had right at the beginning of the year right um that was my thought exactly is like and i'm pretty sure i said that on my video and i don't people probably didn't like it but it was the way i felt is that's now that's one. one that is a great cool. crkt that's i'm telling you right there mm. but a lot of them were like okay i've got this knife now i have to do all the finish work to it you know right. now the exactly. ceo the ceo that knife was that was I didn't see one until last year, and that was one of the biggest surprises of the year to me. I love that knife, and but now they made it a flipper. <laughs> now there's a flipper CEO, which okay, whatever. Yeah, but that knife, just the way it is, yeah, got a steel fantastic, upgrade. fantastic knife. And I think that's one of the things that you know, taking note of feedback from users. This is the only downfall to people that wouldn't buy it is they're like, I can't get to that thumb stud. Right. You know, and so that's why they were like, well, when you start to flip it open, you know, some of that material is already there. So it's like, let's just make it bigger. And then bam, done. Now, see, I, think I did you now, do you have an issue getting to the, the thumb stud, Zach? I know you brought that point up. Do you have an issue with it? Yeah, I mean, you can see how much that thumb stud already stands off the blade. Yeah, yeah. It's it's huge. Yeah. And so for me, it's like, it's just tucked in there. And there's just not enough relief to get to it. Okay. Unless you do that kind of side swipe with it. Okay. But I think the, honestly, though, I just saw I, I just saw Rhea pop out. I was I was just <laughs> yeah. gonna say I was just gonna say I've handled a, a, a CEO a dozen times, and that's why I have a Rhea. That's all I was gonna say. I mean, I I just I can get to the thumb stud every time I Zach every time I've tried a CEO, I mm -hmm. cannot open it. I, I I know a lot of people can. I can't open it. I I can't do it. So. <laughs> 
it's just not not for me i think what i like best about this year it does it sounds a little bit like we're landing on crkt really hard but here's the thing why would we especially all of us that have channels we have channels right this is what we do why would we do that it's because we really want them to be good oh exactly <laughs> that's it, you're you're 100 right peter i want to I want to love everything that CRK does. CRKT yeah. does. I want to love everything that Kershaw and ZT does. I want, well, I mean, we're knife guys. We we, we kind of want to love them all, don't we? Right. I mean, seriously, right. don't we? Yep. I, yeah. I, I, there's a reason I don't do negative reviews on my channels because I have no interest in knives that I don't that I don't really enjoy. And Andrea. Uh, and but part of that is what I was saying earlier. Most of us, when I said I started with Kershaw, the whole room went, "Yeah, me too." CRKT is in the same boat. So SOG, these are the knives that, in because I'm old, man. So this is the knives in the, you know, in the eighties that you could get. And oh, no. I want, I want to, to have them have the same market, the same following, the same path. Oh no. We lost Peter. Oh no. It's Peter went bye -bye. Oh no. What'd you do? I, I was just going to say, if we want something positive. I think CRKT. I uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think CRKT I, if, got us. If we want something positive, I guess I'll say I like the the design. I again, without having it in hand, of the Polar Three. It I don't know why they called it the Polar Three when it doesn't truly look like a Polar, but uh, I am interested in that upswept blade shape, and so it'll be interesting to see if they actually made it good. Uh, but but the design of that is really interesting to me. Oh, there you go, Pilar Three. And now I, you know, to be perfectly honest with you, I really hadn't looked at that one yet. I'll be perfectly honest with you, I haven't, because, uh, I mean, the Pilar. Well, I'm not knife. sure where. It, I'm not sure. Maybe I went back too far, but I th I know it's just now coming out. So, um, I don't know if it's part of their their launch or not. But but again, it's one that I had seen that that I found I think interesting. That one just launched. Yeah, I think it did. I, I think it did. Mm -hmm. I think it did, but the the interesting the interesting part about that one, like I said, is it 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 looks more like the and I'm not going to pronounce it right, but the the Piat, I believe, um, yeah. it looks almost more like the Piat than 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 a Pilar to me. I mean, it's got obviously the finger choil of the Pilar and the handle shape of the Pilar, but it, it just because it's longer, it looks a little bit different, but. Um, it, it definitely looks like one that could be interesting. We'll just have to see. Uh oh, Peter's trying to talk to us, and yep. I can't hear him. Yep, yep. yep. And I, I think one of the things with CRKT, the biggest thing with CRKT is they, you know, we've heard this from some of their other launches, is they have no problem with exploring designs. No, no, not at all. You know, so I like that they continue to design stuff and make it easier, kind of like their field strip technology. I like the fact that, you know, it's all condensed now. Yeah. So you don't have washers, you don't have other stuff that's out yep. there that you got to make sure to put back in. It's like you take it apart, it's in three, it's in three pieces. You know, kind of no, weird. Good feeling, point. But because we've never experienced that, but. I mean, I think the lure here is, I mean, I'm going to always have an interest in CRKT because, because of those exact reasons, but mm -hmm. I'm just tired of buying them and then getting them and going, I don't want to review that. <laughs> Are you back with us, Peter? I don't know if you guys can hear me or not. Oh, we can, hear we can now. We, we can, can now. Yes. All yes, right. We can so now. my laptop battery died. And uh, okay. so I'm actually just going to, I'm going to bow out. Thank you guys so much for everything. I will, uh, I just wanted to come. I didn't want to just disappear. Well, I so tell you, I, I tell you what, I think, think this is a good for everything. Well, yeah, I think this is probably a good place to, to, to call it. I think, man, we've been going for almost two hours. So yeah, I think we've, <laughs> we've probably gone, you know, and, and, but is this where we say, if you made it this far in the video, congratulations. Yeah, yeah <laughs> pretty <laughs> much, pretty much. But Wait. no guys, I, I just want to say, Thank you all very much for doing this. What are you going to say, Russell? Like, what are you so, going to uh, say? There, there are a couple end of end of show things I wanted to pull up. There, there are a few hidden artisan items that have been appearing that everyone seems to kind of miss out on. I figured if anyone's been this far in the uh, the cast, it might be nice for people to know some cool things coming out. Can I can I just throw up a few special items that I think a smaller percentage of people have actually missed that right came ahead. out for artisan this year? Go right so, ahead. Really quick. It's kind of like the, the bonus. So 
first party That's titanium true. clips for CGRBs and artisan mm. models available nice. on the website. They're 15 bucks for a full tie clip. Very cool. Kind of stoked. Also, now that we're running an Amazon store, Black Blade gobies and crags Ooh. are out yes and this i is, did see those I have and this seen is our, but we just released the crag yep. yesterday okay. black red with rpm9 that there is directly from our amazon site because we are selling direct through amazon now it kind of was Very our way nice. to survive 2020 okay. and um yeah okay. those are items that just tended to fly a bit under the radar and i figure if anyone stuck around for the video that long well it may not technically be new stuff but it's kind of new and they are 2020 they, well the clips are 2020 the, the RPM 9 sub is pretty much 2021, but they're pretty great. And we're pretty happy to have those out now. Well, cool. Very cool. I'm glad you shared that with us. And thank you very much, Russell, for coming on here and, no problem. and this doing great. this and showing us uh, what's coming up for Artisan CJRB. Thank you, Zach, for coming on and talking Benchmade with us. We, you're my you're my go-to Benchmade guy. I think you are for pretty much all of us. Yep. But... Yep. And Brad, KC, Peter's already gone. So thank you, Peter. But Brad, KC, thank you guys for doing this, uh, sacrificing the time on your Sunday afternoon. Zach, Russell, greatly, greatly appreciate it. Um, yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll do another one when we see some other stuff coming out for 2021. I'd like to do it. I hope you guys would too. And maybe for we sure. can set something up. This is awesome. Appreciate this it a really. lot. Super happy. Thank you for doing this. This was great. This was wonderful. It's good to connect with the community fun. a little bit. Well, right on, guys. Well, all right, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks Bye. for